Namaste. The topic is understanding your core. This is the sixth part in the topic. And in today's topic, I'll be talking about the effect of the collective unconscious or the various divine archetypes that have on us during the spiritual awakening process or during a Kundalini awakening process. I'll post the link to the other parts in this series in the description box below. Please watch those five parts before you watch this for better understanding. Spiritual process is a process where you are discovering yourself. A normal person lives life from the surface. For example, if you look at the picture here, you can see a big iceberg floating in the water. When you look at the iceberg that is there at the surface level, a normal person who is on board of a ship will think that the size of the iceberg is only limited to the extent it is visible over the surface of water. But when you look beneath the surface, you see that nearly 90% of the ice is present or it is hidden beneath the surface of the water. Our mind too operates like this. The visible area or the visible part at the surface level is our conscious mind. All people, they operate from the level of the surface conscious mind when they are in a wakeful state and when they are conscious and when they are functioning in the external world. When we go to sleep, we are no longer conscious. And in your dream state, now you are experiencing your subconscious mind. Here it is labeled as the personal unconscious. The subconscious mind, it is locked and this cannot be opened by a normal person or by an average person. A lot of spiritual uh, techniques are designed or aimed towards opening the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind it consists of our personal stories, our pain, our repressed memories, our fears, trauma, the uh, material that is there from past lifetimes. Everything that is about us is present here in the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind can be experienced in a dream state. When we are sleeping and when we are in the dream state, the veils between the conscious mind and the subconscious mind thin down a little so that the material that is there in the subconscious mind can surface to the conscious mind in terms of dream. And that is why when you analyze your dreams, you can understand yourself even better. Beneath the subconscious mind is the collective unconscious. This collective unconscious is like a collective knowledge data bank for the human population that has existed. And this data bank is uh, accessible by anybody who has undergone a Kundalini awakening. No matter what religion he belongs to, what culture he belongs to, once the process reaches a certain level, this lifetime can become the last lifetime for the person. And it is during this last or nearly last lifetime, this person is able to access the information that is there in the collective unconscious. The collective unconscious, it consists of certain symbols, certain signs, certain images, themes, legends, stories. This is how information is stored in the collective unconscious. This information withstands the transition of time. That is the images which you see in the collective unconscious today are the same which were seen by people who were there 2000 years before you. 
and these images will be seen by people who will be born 2000 years later too. The collective unconscious, it has a major effect on our psychology, how we think, how we see life, how we experience it, how we define ourselves with in relation to others around us, uh, the various connections, human connections we have, all these things, the archetypes in the collective unconscious influences it. Archetype is an example for a thing or example for a type of person. For example, uh, general archetypes are like the mother, the father, the innocent boy or the teacher, the wise man, the king, the beggar. No matter what country you visit, you will always find these type of archetypes present everywhere. You immediately recognize these people based on their archetype. Even many things which we use in a daily life, for example a chair, no matter which country you go to, you immediately recognize the chair. So these archetypes of things, they are part of the collective unconscious. This collective unconscious is active in the animals also. Now every species of animal has its own collective unconscious, its own knowledge data bank. For example, in 1953, certain zoologists were studying a type of monkey. They were very closely watching their behavior. They often notice these monkeys pulling out certain roots, certain tubers from the ground and eating it along with the dirt. One day one monkey thought he could wash the root. So he went to the nearest water body and he started washing. Other monkeys followed what he was doing. They liked the idea. And after that day, every day these monkeys were washing and eating them. After some time, these zoologists who were studying these species over many countries, they noticed this peculiar behavior in another group of monkeys which is very far away from this land, which is sort of cut off by sea and it is very far away from this land, maybe in another corner of the world. The same species of monkeys were seen washing sweet potatoes and eating them. And nobody understood from where they picked up this new behavior. The reason I am telling you this incident is, the first monkey when it washed its sweet potato and others joined in, it learned something new. And the new behavior got recorded in its collective unconscious mind. From there, it was accessible to other monkeys, wherever they were present in the world, other monkeys could access this knowledge data bank. And they too started using this behavior in their daily life. So that is the effect of collective unconscious. At a larger scale, when a group adopts a certain behavior or when something unusual something newly is learnt or lived, then that new thing is, it becomes a part of the collective unconscious and from there the other cultures or the people living in other societies very far away can pick up this new behaviour from the collective unconscious. This is where the entire knowledge data bank is stored. In a normal person, the collective unconscious helps them to uh, understand the various archetypes and the collective unconscious it exists in the normal person's mind in the form of myths, legends or stories even the bedtime stories which you hear they contain a lot of information that come from the collective unconscious but we do not understand the depth of the legends or the stories which we hear. We just take it as a story. We should be very spiritual to understand the deeper hidden meanings of these various legends or myths. 
that run in the society. For a person who is caught up at the surface level, the conscious level, he is fighting his daily battles externally. He is focused on survival issues. He may not be uh, in contact or in touch with the deeper level of the collective unconscious. He may not be aware that he has a subconscious mind or he has this collective unconscious within him. It is only when we start focusing on our uh, growth spiritually or when we start fighting our inner demons, when we understand that there is so much within us that needs to be changed. At this level, we are no longer bothered about changing the outside world. We are trying to look within. We are trying to look at our own flaws, accept them, accept our pain, our fears. We are trying to understand how we see life, perceive life and whether we are doing it the right way or not. We are trying to heal ourselves. When you are doing this, you are moving or you are bringing up the material which is there in your subconscious mind. So the journey within starts. Part of the collective unconscious consists of these archetypes which I spoke about or these myths or legends. These are part of a culture, part of a psychological makeup and these are accessible to all. But there is a more deeper aspect to the collective unconscious which is much hidden, which is way deeper. It can be only accessed when you have a Kundalini awakening or when you are going through a very intense spiritual awakening process. That is the level of the universal divine archetypes, which is hidden much within the uh, collective unconsciousness. As I said earlier, the universal archetypes are recognized by the normal population. They are part of the legends and stories. But when somebody has a Kundalini awakening, these legends and stories which are there in the collective unconscious, they become your reality. They become your experiences. You start experiencing the life, the trials, the tribulations of an archetype. You take on an archetypal energy. And these archetypes are not normal like archetypes. These are the divine archetypes. The divine archetypes are archetypes that are there in the legends of various cultures. We have different cultures like the Greeks have their own gods and goddesses, the Aztec civilization, the Egyptian civilization. There are many different legends in different places, different countries, different cultures, different languages. Even in India, we have a lot of legends and uh, these legends, they have certain highly spiritually evolved uh, women and men. How they have evolved from being a normal person and how they have transformed into a divine person or how they found their inner divinity. All those stories are there or the formats of those stories are present at the level of the universal divine archetypes. So when we are undergoing a Kundalini awakening process, in the last lifetime, we start experiencing the energy of these divine archetypes. This archetypal energy can be called as Ansh in the Hindi language. That is Hanuman ka Ansh, Yashiv ka Ansh. So this Divine archetypal energy is a kind of format which is existing in the level of the universal unconscious and there are many such formats that are available there. When we are coming out of our personality, as I said in my earlier videos, the Kundalini awakening process starts clearing away the personality that is there, which is ingrained in your system. That is not getting cleared out. 
when this starts happening you move into a particular archetypal energy you start experiencing life of this archetypal energy you attract the experiences of this archetypal energy the way you relate to people around you the way you see yourself the external world the way or the quality of dreams you have all these things come from that particular archetypal energy you are just living the life of that archetypal energy that which you have taken on these archetypal energies they help you to grow further in your spiritual path say for example we are designing a motorcycle the prototype think of it as the universal divine archetype the first design of the motorcycle from this design we mass produce many motorcycles so this first design the format is the universal divine archetype universal divine archetypes they mold our energy so that we fit into their shoes we see experience and we learn the lessons that are required for us to grow further and we use this divine archetypal energy on a spiritual path especially when uh, we have uh, activated a pineal gland kundalini shakti has reached here the agya chakra the person is capable of coming out of the body they are capable of astral traveling at this level the personality is gone nearly gone in that place you have the archetypal energy that is shaping the person's spiritual progress when this person is out in the astral level he is traveling through various dimensions the beings that are there in other dimensions will recognize him by his archetypal energy the journey towards reaching these archetypal energies is not easy when the subconscious mind is opening up and when we are moving deep into the subconscious and the collective unconscious it happens over many years and this journey is very difficult we experience a lot of pain lot of fear lot of anger we experience certain changes sudden changes in our life changes which are very difficult to cope with for example we might lose our job a capacity to work we may lose all our finances we can lose our health or we can take on an ailment which stays with us and bothers us for years together we can become bedridden we become dependent on somebody else even for your basic needs we lose our loved ones certain very tragic situations become part of our experience the person goes more deep into trauma or depression or fear we are spending our time maybe years at a stretch just trying to deal with our inner pain sorrow or maybe trauma we trying to release it from our system we experience all these things because the shift from the conscious mind into the deeper layers of the mind is not easy it is not accessible for a normal person so when the subconscious mind suddenly opens up the material starts coming out it causes a lot of problems in our life because now your life is not moving as per the determined path you are now going beyond or rather you're going more within and your life is now different from the lives of people around you you know you are no longer uh, interested in things which a normal person is interested in it 
you are searching only for your truth other things don't matter to you the more deeper you sink in at every level there is certain amount of pain to be released certain amount of emotions to be uh, released fears to be faced and that can be very very uh, demanding very very painful very very challenging the more these experiences come to you the more pain you experience the more deeper you move into the uh, unconscious mind by the time you are coming into the collective unconscious you will start experiencing the mystical symbols you can see snakes or uh, you can see certain types of images or symbols which are associated with spiritual awakening they can be seen maybe as part of your visions or as part of your dreams you will see certain signs and synchronicities that is because your energy has gone deeper into the level of the collective unconscious or rather the material that is there in the collective un unconscious is surfacing to your conscious mind when the material is coming up you will see it in the form of symbols and you will experience this as pranic movements in your body the prana is now clearing away the various pathways in your body at this level you will start taking on an archetypal energy unconsciously you will be living the life of a particular archetypal energy that is a divine archetypal energy the type of divine archetypal energy you will take on i think is determined by the lessons you need to learn through your spiritual journey the mission you will be called to deliver after your journey is over and maybe this archetypal energy is more suitable to you and you will it will help you evolve better or maybe your personality is more suited to move into that direction into that particular archetypal energy this archetypal energy will shape your experiences it will help you to clear away the pain the trauma it will help you to learn the life lessons and you will realize that you have taken on an archetypal energy much later in your spiritual evolution it is when kundalini shakti moves up it goes beyond the heart it is moving upwards that is when you will realize that the life you are living is not actually your life but rather you are reliving the moments the experiences the life of a divine person coming to my experience on this topic i was searching for information on the kundalini awakening process ever since i understood that this process was unfolding in my body but i was not getting satisfactory answers from any forum i kept looking for answers one day when i was about to go to sleep i had a vision in that vision i saw this book cover the goddess within immediately i opened my eyes i was perplexed i googled to see whether this book really existed and yes it is there i found the book yeah the goddess within i thought kundalini was pointing me in the direction from where i can get information about my kundalini awakening process i was very excited and happy i ordered this book i got the book when i saw the book i was very disappointed because there was nothing about the kundalini awakening process written in it i did not understand why my intuition pointed me towards reading this book 
or why Kundalini suggested this book to me. I left the book aside. I did not touch it. After about five years, one day while clearing the shelf away, I again saw this book. I started turning pages and I reached a particular page where the goddess Parsifani, a topic written on her started. I got strangely attracted to this topic and I started reading it from there. And when I was reading about the goddess Persephone, I was surprised to see that major themes in her life matched the themes in my life. The way she experiences situations, the way she sees certain situations, the way she relates to people around her, it's very similar to my way of experiencing life. Many experiences that I've attracted into my life are similar to those of Persephone. She is the goddess of the underworld and she has a lot of underworld creatures surrounding her and I had a lot of experience with these underworld beings that is the ghosts and other entities during my awakening process. She has an incident that happens in her life that the lord of the underworld that is Hades, he forcibly pulls her down into the underworlds. When I was in my younger days, I used to have dreams or visions of me getting pulled down into the underworlds. This was accompanied by a lot of fear and a sense of suffocation and a sense of severe helplessness which I could not understand then. But after reading this, I understood that I was reliving the moments of Persephone's experience. When I went through the entire uh, topic on Persephone, I realized that I somehow have taken on her archetypal energy and that I was living her life. The life that I was living was not my life. Rather, my life was just bits and pieces of Persephone's experiences. Persephone's story format. This experience explained to me a lot of questions I had about my own life. Why my life was not normal like the lives of other women around me. Why it had to be different in every possible way. And why I was so walking against the basic social norms why I was not subscribing to a lot of things which a normal person would subscribe to and why I was experiencing high intensity experiences. These experiences shook me from within. I was an extra sensitive person and being an extra sensitive person, the pain that was experienced through these various uh, things that happened in my life that shook me to the core. I have not seen anybody around me living life from the depth which I was living. All these questions which I had in mind about my life got answered when I read Persephone's story. That is when I understood the effect archetypes have on a person who is undergoing a spiritual awakening process. The person who has come to his last lifetime, who is undergoing a spiritual awakening process, it will not follow a predetermined path like how it is for others. It will be way different from the average person's life. Because now you are living life from a greater depth and you are taken on the energy of a divine archetype. So you will live the moments of that divine archetype. You may attract certain issues, certain strange situations, certain people into your life and they seem to be coming in constantly 
or the same situations keep repeating till you learn the lessons because that archetype had those experiences you will continuously have those experiences until you learn the lessons that the archetype has let, uh, learned and you evolve through those experiences how much suffering you undergo depends on the kind of archetypal energy you have taken on if your archetype has taken too many risks in life has suffered a lot then you will also take too many risks and suffer a lot the kind of archetype will decide the kind of work you will do after your spiritual awakening process even the astral experience which you will have will depend on the archetypal energy you hold for example when i am astral traveling other entities will see me as the persephone archetypal energy they will not see me as shailaja or a type of personality for them i am persephone archetypal energy and they will behave with me as the way they have behaved with persephone the kind of archetypal energy you belong to you will understand this much later in your process that is when kundalini shakti has moved up into the higher chakras that is when you will uh, know intuitively who you are or kundalini shakti will point you towards a direction where you can get the information from from chaos comes order and from order comes a system so this is a quote of albert einstein nothing can exist without order nothing can arise without chaos initially in our spiritual awakening process we are confused we don't know what is happening we are seeking answers uh, we have or we are going through a lot of problems we do not understand why our life is so different from others around us why we experience emotions at a with such intensity why we cannot compromise on our values why we think so differently from others around us why do we take decisions that make us walk against the societal norms and we experience more friction in our daily life or why we attract certain experiences certain people certain people certain situations into our life and why do we keep repeating those loops all these things they happen to us for a reason because from this extreme chaos comes the order or the spiritual awakening that puts our life into order a normal man who has evolved from the animal he still carries the animal's instincts within him and basically most of the population are still very animalistic in nature when i say animalistic that is they are very territorial they operate from a lot of fears they are only worried about their next meal they are not interested in practicing certain behaviors we shall make life better for them or better for, for people around them through this spiritual awakening process first the person moves away from the lower animalistic nature and he moves into a higher emotional state this is where your personality is getting washed out from your system now the person does not identify as a human neither has the process completed to the level where he can identify with the ultimate source here at the intermediary level the person will develop a different kind of identity like a star seed a ray type or a twin flame um or they might understand that they belong to certain archetypes so they will associate themselves with that particular archetype and they will move away from this identity of being a human they are more comfortable identifying themselves differently they may not talk about it openly but inner feeling is that they are different from others they are different because they don't belong to this uh, earthly plane they are different because they have certain 
aspect or energy within them which does not vibrate with the earth energy. This happens at a level where the prana has cleared away the pathways. The personality to some extent has been washed out of the system. And the Kundalini Shakti has moved beyond the lower chakras. It is moving into the higher chakras. That is when the person stops seeing himself or identifying himself or herself as a human. Now they develop a different kind of an identity which defines their level of the spiritual awakening and the psychological ways of relating to others around them or relating to the various situations they face in life and the way they see themselves. From here the next level is the uh, divine nature, understanding that you hold the same energy within you, that you are divine. You are the source. This, when, before you reach that stage, at this level, moving up, you, you are more aware of your archetypal energy. It comes to your conscious level. Before that, your archetype was working within you, but at an unconscious level. From this level up, you are more aware of your archetypal energy shaping your life. At a higher level, the archetypal energy, it allows us to experience a different depth of psychic awareness. It has a major impact on the way our spiritual transformation happens. And this is a part of our spiritual awakening journey. In this series, I've been talking about how the personality of a person evolves and how a person's spiritual path takes on from the first stage that is where the person is mostly uh, living from fears to the last stage where he becomes an enlightened being. So the first stage here is when the person is experiencing his first few lifetimes as a human. Here the person is caught up mostly in fear, he has his survival issues and he is mostly tamasic in nature. People at this level, they exhibit a lot of personality disorders. Their lives are very chaotic. They cannot understand higher emotions like love, compassion. They can act like they are in love but they do not experience these things, these beautiful states. It takes many lifetimes. So from the first stage to the second stage, over many lifetimes, the person takes on a personality. When he takes on a personality, now he is a mixed bag of different qualities. Some good, some mixed, some bad qualities. At the third level, the person moves away from the tamasic qualities towards more sattvic qualities. He becomes a gentle, compassionate person. A person who only wishes good for everybody around him. As I said earlier, once you develop a particular sattvic quality that resonates with a particular chakra, the person will experience a Kundalini awakening because now his soul is matured enough to have this experience. The Kundalini Shakti clears away the personality programming and when it is clearing away this personality programming, the person starts seeing uh, various dream symbols, myths. He starts experiencing the archetypal energy as part of his spiritual awakening process. This archetypal energy will take you to the doorstep from where you will start experiencing Samadhi. The higher states of Samadhi. There are many different levels of Samadhi. This Samadhi will clear away the remaining Vasanas and Samskaras, that is the mental tendencies and the mental impressions which you have. Everything will be cleared out from the system. At the end of the process, you will have a mature connection between your heart and your brain. 
at the end of the process you have found your inner divinity you have become an enlightened person so this is the basic format in which the spiritual journey happens no matter what personality you belong to no matter what archetypal energy you take on so the personality and the archetypal energy they help to shape your spiritual journey the divine archetypes they are different in nature that is some archetypes can express more the mother energy to the external world some archetypes express the warrior quality to the external world some archetypes are more the lover type and some are more of the mystical type persephone was mystical in nature she had a lot of mystical knowledge and that is why i have more access to mystical knowledge because i have experienced the life of persephone in the same way for men too there are many div uh, divine masculine archetypes and each of these archetypes they express a different quality to the external world every archetype has many uh, different legends myths associated across various cultures and there are many uh, gods or divine men who will fall into these categories say for example i am the mystic type and i've taken on persephone but there could be other archetypal characters who are also mystical and they're found in different legends across different cultures i have not done a research on this i am just speaking from my own experience when i have enough knowledge or when i do enough research on this subject i will maybe post a series on the different types of archetypes we may take on during our spiritual awakening process in our spiritual awakening process we start disidentifying with our thoughts our emotions our beliefs which are based on certain conditioning or social norms and which are not value based once we reach a level of integrity we prefer to operate from universal values when we start operating from universal values we do not take on any more karma and this action of ours brings us to our last lifetime when we practice selfless service and when we operate from universal values we start slowly disidentifying from many social belief systems many cultural belief systems many religious belief systems most of it gets washed away from our life now we stand as a person who stripped away from many layers of conditioning the next level is that the personality gets stripped away from the person so now we start disidentifying with our fears with our desires with our different experiences everything gets washed away from our system and the last is our life story when we realize that the life story which we have taken on belongs to a particular divine archetype and we were just reliving those different experiences or the different instances that were happening in the divine archetype's life when we understand it we even disidentify from our personal story so now nothing bothers us we are not tied down by our ideas or thoughts or emotions or memories or our life story we are now a sovereign being we stand free we have no attachments and this fills us with an intense sense of freedom we have come out of all those things that keep a person caught up 
in the cycles of life and death. We have broken all shackles and we are a free person, a free man, a free woman. When we reach this level, the inner constantly chattering mind quietens. It is no longer throwing up material from your subconscious or unconscious mind. And even if it does, you are not interested in those stories because you have disidentified from that. This leads to states of prolonged silence where even a single thought will not cross your mind for an hour or even for two hours. You are in such state of deep silence. Once we attain those states of deep silence, the inner chemistry in your body changes so that you can start experiencing the different levels of states of Samadhi. In this series, I was trying to encapsulate a lot of information which is part of the spiritual journey. This information will help you understand how your spiritual journey is progressing, how you are shaping and moving ahead in the process. The archetypal energy gets revealed to us much later in our spiritual awakening process. And the universe also uses these archetypes to convey a lot of messages to you. For example, you will see certain archetypes dressed in a particular way, holding certain weapons, or you will see them as part of certain legends. So in certain dream states, you might see yourself as that archetype. It is when you should understand that Something connected to that archetype will be involved in your spiritual awakening journey. Or you may see the clothes worn by that archetype or the weapon held by the archetype in your dreams. These dreams convey an important message to you. And when you look further into the legend of that particular archetype, a lot of information is revealed to you about your own spiritual journey. I hope the series has helped you in understanding your process better. Thank you.